time's sake. So do we have a master? That's our problem. We don't. <laughs> I'll be the master. I'll be it. I'll be okay, the master. the master. Do we have a bo bosun? No. Okay. okay. I'll be the bosun. Okay. Uh, who else? We got an Alonzo. That's yeah. Richard. And we, do we have Antonio? Um. Yeah, I'm Antonio and Stefano. Okay. And Gonzalo would be uh, Jim. All right, we'll just jump in. Oh, yeah, Jim's Gonzalo and Trinculo. I got Stefano and Antonio. So who wants so to do Gonzalo until Jim comes? I'll do it. Okay. All right, yeah, we got everybody. Let's just go for it. Okay. All right. Open us up. Act one, scene one. Oh, a right. ship at yeah. sea. A contemptuous noise of thunder and lightning heard. Boat swing! Here, master, what cheer? Good, speak to the mariners. Fall to it yearly, or we run ourselves aground. Be stir, be stir. Hey, me heart. Truly, truly, me heart. Yeah, yeah. Take in hey, the husband. Up so, tend to the master's whistle. Blow to the first thy wind. If room enough. Good boat, Swain. Have care. Where is the master? Obey the man. I pray now. Keep below. Where is the master, boat, Swain? Do you not hear him? You mar our labor. Keep your cabins. You do assist the storm. Nay, good. Be patient. When the sea is, hence, what cares these roarers for the name of king? To cabin, silence, trouble us not. Good. Yet remember whom thou hast aboard. None that I love more than myself. You are a counselor. If you can command these elements to silence and work the peace of the present, we will not hand a rope more. Use your authority. If you cannot, give thanks you have lived so long and make yourself ready in your cabin for the mischance of the hour, if it so hap. Cheerily, good heart, it's out of our way, I say. I have great comfort from this fellow. Methinks he has no drowning mark upon him. His complexion is perfect gallows. Stand fast with bait to his hanging. Make the rope of his destiny our cable. For our own doth a little advantage. If he be not born to be hanged, our case is miserable. Down with the topmast! Yeah! Lower! Lower! Bring her to try the main course! Ah! Plague upon this howling, they are louder than the weather in our office. Yet again, what do you hear? Shall we give o'er and drown? Have you a mind to sink? A pox I a throat, you bawling, blasphemous, incharitable dog! Oh, work you then! Okay. Hang her, hang you, Hawson, insolent noisemaker! We are less afraid to be drowned than thou art! I'll warrant him for drowning, though the ship were no stronger than a nutshell and as leaky as an unstanched wench. Lay her hold, a hold! And see her two courses off to sea again. Lay her off! Oh, Lord! Heaven! Heaven! Oh, Lord! Oh, what must her mouth be cold? The king and prince at prayers, let's assist them, for our case is as theirs. I am out of patience. We are merely cheated of our lives by drunkards. 
this wide chap rascal, would thou mightest lie drowning the washing of ten tides? So he'll be hanged yet, though every drop of water swears against it and gape at widest glut him. Oh, Mr. Let's, uh, let's all sink! Let's all sink with the king! Let's take leave of him! Yeah. Now would I give a thousand furlongs of sea for an acre of barren ground, long heaths, brown furs, anything! The will's above be done, but I would fain die a dry death! Scene two, the island before Prospero's cell. Enter Prospero and Miranda. If by your art, my dearest father, you have put the wild waters in this roar, allay them. The sky, it seems, would pour down stinking pitch, and but that the sea mounting to the welkin's cheek dashes the fire out. Oh, I have suffered with those that I saw suffer. A brave vessel who had in no doubt some noble creature in her dashed all to pieces. Oh, the cry did knock against my very heart. Poor souls, they perished. Had I been any god of power, I would have sunk the sea within the earth, or ere it should the good ship to have swallowed, and those <sighs> frauding souls within her. Be collected. No more amazement. Tell your piteous hearts there's no harm done. Oh, woe the day. No harm. I have done nothing but in care of thee. Of thee, my dear one, thee, my daughter, who art ignorant of what thou art, not knowing of whence I am, nor that I am more better than Prospero, master of a full poor cell, and thy no greater father. More to know to never meddle with my thoughts. Tis time I should inform thee, father, Lend thy hand and pluck my magic garment from me so. Lie there, my art. Wipe thou thine eyes, have comfort. The direful spectacle of the wreck which touched the very virtue of compassion in thee. I have with such provision in mine art, so safely ordered that there is no soul, no, not so much to perdition as a hair. Be tid to any creature in the vessel which thou heardest cry, which thou saw sink, sit down, for thou must know father. If by your art, my dearest father, you have put the wild waters in this roar, I'll leave them. The sky, it seems, would pour down stinking pitch, but that the sea mounting to the welkin's cheek dashes the fire out. Oh, I have suffered with those that I saw suffer, a brave vessel, who had no doubt some noble creatures in her, dashed all to pieces. Oh, the cry did knock against my very heart. Poor souls, they perish. Had I been any god of power, I would have sunk the sea within the earth or er, or ear it should the good ship so have swallowed and the frightening souls within her be collected no more amazement tell your piteous heart there's no harm done oh the day no harm i have done nothing but in care of thee O oh, thee, of thee, my dear one, thee, my daughter, who art ignorant of what thou art, not knowing of whence I am, nor that I am more better than Prospero, master of a full poor cell, and thy no greater father. More to know did never meddle with my thoughts. Tis time I should inform thee, father, lend thy hand and pluck my magic garment from me, so... Lie there, my art, wipe thou thine arms, eyes have comfort. The direful spectacle of the wreck which touched the very virtue of compassion in thee. I have with such provision in mine art, so stately ordered that there is no soul. No, not so much perdition as a hair. Be tid to any creature in the vessel, which thou heardest cry, which thou sawest sink, 
sit down, for thou must know, must now know farther. You have often begun to tell me what I am, but stopped and left me to a bootless inquisition, concluding, stay, not yet. The hours now come, the very minute bids thee ope thine ear, obey and be attentive. Canst thou remember a time before we came unto this cell? I do not think thou canst, for then thou wast not out three years old. Certainly, sir, I can. By what? By any other house or person? Or anything the image tells me that thou hath kept with thy remembrance? This far off, and rather like a dream than an assurance that my remembrance warrants. Had I not four or five women once that tended me? Thou hadst and more, Miranda, but how it is that this lives in thy mind? What seest thou else in the dark backward and abysm of time? If thou rememberest aught ere thou camest here, how thou camest here thou mayest. But that I do not. Twelve years since, Miranda, twelve years since, thy father was the Duke of Milan and a, pin, a prince of power. Sir, are you, are not you my father? Thy mother was a piece of virtue, and she said, Thou wast my daughter. And thy father was Duke of Milan, and thou, his only heir and princess, no worse, issued. Oh, the heavens! What foul play had we that we came, he came from thence, or blessed was we did? Both, both, my girl, by foul play, as thou sayest, were we heaved thence, but blessedly hoped hither. Oh, my heart bleeds to think, O oh, Tin, that I have turned you to, which is from my remembrance, please you further. My brother and thy uncle, called Antonio, I pray thee mark me, that a brother should be so perfidious. He whom next thyself of all the world I loved, and to him put the manage of my state, as at the time, at that time, though all the signories, it was the first and prospero the prime duke, being so reputed in dignity and for the liberal arts without a parallel. Those being all my study, the government I cast upon my brother, and to my state grew stranger, being transported and wrapped in secret studies. Thy false uncle, dost thou attend me? Sir, most heedfully. Being once perfected how to grant suits, how to deny them, who to advance and who to trash for overtopping, new created the creatures that were mine, I say, or changed them, or else new formed them, having both the key of office, officer and office, set all hearts, I the state, to what tune pleased his ears, that now he was the ivy which had hid my princely trunk, and sucked my verdure on it. Thou attendest not. Oh, good sir, I do. I pray thee, mark me. I, thus neglecting worldly ends, all dedicated to closeness and the bettering of my mind, with that which, but by being so retired or apprised all popular rate in my false brother, awaked an evil nature, and my trust, like a good parent, did beget of him a falsehood in its contrary as great as my trust was, which had indeed no limit, a confidence sans bound. He being thus lorded, not only with what my revenue yielded, but what my power might else ex exact, like one who having into truth by telling of it, made such a sinner of his memory to credit his own lie. He did believe he was indeed the Duke out of the substitution and executing the outward face of royalty with all prerogative, hence his ambition growing. Dost thou hear? Your tale, sir, would cure deafness. To have no screen between this part he played and him be played it for, he needs will be absolute Milan. 
Me, poor man, my library was dukedom large enough of temporal royalties. He thinks me now incapable, a confederates, so dry he was for sway with the king of Naples. To give him annual tribute, do him homage, subject his coronet to his crown, and bend the dukedom yet unbowed. Alas, poor Milan, to most ignoble stooping. Oh, dear heavens. Mark his condition in the event. Then tell me if this might be a brother. I should seem to think but nobly of my grandmother. Good wombs have borne bad sons. Now the condition. The king of Naples, being an enemy to me and veteran, hearkens my brother's suit which was that he, in lieu of the premises of homage, and I know not how much tribute, should presently extirpate me and mine out of the dukedom and confer fair Milan with all the honors on my brother, whereon a treacherous army levied one midnight, faded to the purpose did Antonio open the gates of Milan, and I, the dead of darkness, the minister for the purpose, hurried thence me and thy crying self. A lot for pity, I not remembering how I cried out then, will cry it, it over again. It is a hint that rings mine eyes to. Hear a little further, and thence I bring thee to the present business which now is upon us, which without that which this story were most impertinent. Wherefore? Did they not that hour destroy us? Well, demanded wench, my tale provokes that question. Dear, they durst not. So dear the love of my people bore me, nor set a mark so bloody on the business, but with colors fairer painted on their foul ends. In few, they hurried us abroad. A bark bore us some leagues to sea, where they prepared a rotten carcass of a boat, not rigged, nor tackles, sails, nor masts, the very rats, instinctively had quit it. There they hoist us to cry to the sea that roared to us, to sigh, to the winds whose pity, sighing back again, did us but loving wrong. Alack, what trouble was I then to you? Oh, a cherubim, thou wast that do, thou wast that did preserve me. Thou didst smile infused with a fortitude from heaven. When I have decked the sea with drops full salt, under my birth and groan, which raised in me an undergoing stomach to bear up against what should ensue. How came we ashore? By providence divine. Some food we had and some fresh water that a noble Neapolitan Gonzalo, out of his charity being then appointed master of the design did give us with rich garments, linen, stuffs, and necessaries, would such have steadied much so of his gentleness. Knowing I love my books, he furnished me from mine own library with volumes that I prize above my dukedom. Would I might but ever see that man? Now I arise. Sit still and hear the last of our sea sorrow. Here in this island we arrived, and here have I Thy schoolmaster made thee more profit than other princesses can that have much time for vainer hours and tutors not so careful. Heavens, thank you for it. And now I pray you, sir, for still tis bearing it in my mind, your reason for raising this sea storm? Know thus far forth, by accident's most strange, bountiful fortune. Now, my dear lady, hath mine enemies brought to this shore, and by my prescience I find my zenith doth depend upon a most auspicious star, whose influence, if now I court, but not omit my fortunes, will ever after droop. Here, cease more questions. Thou art inclined to sleep. Tis a good dullness, and give it way. I know thou canst not choose. Come away, servant. Come, I am ready now. Approach my Ariel, come. All hail, great master. I hail thee. I come to answer to thy best pleasure. Be it to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on the curled clouds, 
to thy strong bidding, task Ariel in all his quality. Hast thou spirit performed to point the tempest that I bade thee? To every article I boarded the king's ship, now on the beak, now in the waist, in the deck, in every cabin. I flamed amazement. Sometimes I divide and burn in many places. On the topmast, the yards, and bowsprit, would I flame distinctly, then meet and join. Joe's lightnings, the precursors, or the dreadful thunderclaps, more momentary in sight, outrunning were not. The fire and cracks of sulfurous roaring. The most mighty Neptune seemed to besiege and make his bold waves tremble. Yea, his dread trident shake. My brave spirits, who were so firm, so constant, that this coil would not infect his reason. Not a soul, but felt the fever of the mad and played some tricks of desperation. All but mariners plunged into the foaming brine and quit the vessel. Then all afire with me, the king's son Ferdinand, with hair upstaring, then like reeds, not hair, was the first man that leapt, cried, Hell is, Hell is empty, empty, and all, and the, all devils the devils are, are here. here. Why, that's my spirit. But was not this nice shore? Close by, my master. But are they aerial safe? Not a hair perished on their sustaining garments, not a blemish, but fresher than before. And as thou baits me, in troops I have dispersed them about the isle. The king's son have I landed by himself, whom I left cooling of the air with sighs in an odd angle of the isle, and sitting his arms in this sad knot. Oh, of the king's ship. The mariners say how thou hast disposed and all the rest of the fleet. Safely in harbor is the king's ship in the deep nook where once thou callest me up at midnight to fetch dew from the still wet birth smooths where she'd hid. The mariners all under hatches stowed who with a charm joined to their separate labor I have left asleep. And for the rest of the fleet which I dispersed they all have met again and are upon the Mediterranean float bound sadly home for Naples. Supposing that they saw the king's ship rack and his great person perish. Ariel, thy charge exactly is performed, but there's more work. What is the time of the day? Past the mid-season. At least two glasses. The time twixt six and now must by us both be spent most preciously. Is there still more toil? Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which is not yet performed me. How oh, now, Moody, what is thou canst demand? My liberty. Before the time be out, no more. I prithee, remember I have done thee worthy service, told thee no lies, made thee no mistakings, served without a grudge or grumblings thou didst promise to bait me a full year. Dost thou forget from what a torrent I did free thee? No. Thou dost, and think it much to tread the ooze of the salt deep, to run upon the sharp wind of the north, to do me business in the veins of the earth when it is baked with frost. I do not, sir. Thou liest, malignant thing. Hast thou forgot the fox which Sycorax, who with age and envy was grown into a hoop? Hast thou forgot her? No, sir. Thou hast. Where was she born? Speak, tell me. Sir, in Argier. Ah, uh, what was she, was she so? I must once in a month recount what thou hast been, which thou forgottest, this damned witch Sycorax, from mischief manifold and sorceries terrible to enter human hearing from Argier. Thou knowest was banished for one thing she did. They would not take her life. Is this not true? Aye, sir. This blue-eyed hag was hither brought with child and here was left by the sailors. Thou, my slave, as thou reported thyself, wast then her servant. And for thou wast a spirit too delicate to act her earthly and abhorred commands, refusing her grand hest 
she did confine thee by help of her more potent minister and in her most unmitigable rage into a cloven pine within which rift imprisoned thou didst painfully remain a dozen years within which space she died and left thee here without didst bent thy groans as fast as mill wheel strikes then was this island save for the sun that she did litter here a freckled whelp hag born not honored with a human shape yes caliban her son dull thing i say so he that caliban whom now i keep in service thou best knowest what torment i did find thee in thy groans did make wolves howl and penetrate the breasts of every angry bears it was a torment to lay upon the damned, which Sycorac could not again undo. It was my not when I arrived and heard thee that made gape the pine and let thee out. I thank thee, master. If thou more murmurst it, I will rend an oak and peg thee in his naughty entrails till thou hast howled away twelve winters pardon master i will be correspondent to command and do my spreading gently do so and after two days i will discharge thee that's my noble master what shall i do say what what shall i do go make thyself like a nymph of the sea be subject to new, no sight but thine and mine invisible to every eyeball else Go take this shape, and hither come into it. Go hence with diligence. Awake, dear heart, awake. Thou hast slept well, awake. The strangeness of your story put heaviness in me. Shake it off, come on. We'll visit Caliban, my slave, who never yields us kind answer. Tis a villain, sir, I do not love to look on. But. As tis, we cannot miss him. He does make our fire, fetch in our wood, and serves in offices that profit us. What ho, slave, Caliban, thou earth, thou speak. There's wood enough within. Come forth, I say. There's other business for thee. Come, thou tortoise, when? Fine apparition, my quaint Ariel. Hark in thine ear. My lord, it shall be done. Thou poisonous slave, cut by the devil himself upon the wicked dam, come forth. As wicked too as e'er my mother brushed with raven's feather from unwholesome fen, drop on you both. A southwest blow on you, you blister you all over. For this be sure, tonight thou shalt have cramps. So I've stitches, thou shalt pen thy breath up. Urchins shall for that vast of night that they may work all exercise on thee. Thou shalt be pinched as thick as honeycomb, each pinch more stinging than bees that made them. Oh, I must eat my dinner. This island's mine by Sycorax, my mother, which thou takest from me. When thou camest first, thou stokest and strokest me and made much of me, would give me water and berries in it, and teach me how to name the bigger light and how the less that burn by day and night. And then I loved thee and showed thee all the qualities of the isle, the fresh springs, the brine pits, barren place and fertile, Cursed be I that did so. All the charms of Sycorax, toads, beetles, bats light on you, for I am all the subjects that you have, which first was mine own king, and here you sty me in this hard rock whilst you do keep me from the rest of the island. Thou most lying slave, whom stripes may move, not kindness. I have used thee, filth as thou art, with human care, and lodged thee in mine own cell, till thou didst seek to violate the honor of my child. Oh, oh, 
Wouldst thou had done, thou didst prevent me. I had peopled Elsa's isle with Calibans. Abhorred slave, which any print of goodness will not take. Being capable of all ill, I pitied thee, took pains to make thee speak, taught thee each hour one thing or other, when thou didst not, savage, know thine own meaning, but what is gabble, like a thing most brutish, I endowed thy purposes with words that made them known, but thy vile race, though thou didst learn, had that in it which good natures could not abide to be with. Therefore, wast thou deservedly confined into this rock, who hadst deserved more than a prison? You taught me language, and my profit on it is I know how to curse the red plague. Rid you for learning me your language. I seed hence. Fetch us in fuel and be quick. Thou art best to answer other business. Shrugs thou malice. If thou neglectest our dust unwillingly, what I command, I'll rack thee with old cramps, fill all thy bones with aches, make thee roar that beasts shall tremble at thy din. Oh, Riley. I must obey. His art is of such power, it would control my damned god set about and make a vassal of him. So, slave, hence. Come unto these yellow sands and then take hands. Cursed when you have and kissed the wild winds worst, footed faintly here and there, as we spice the burden bear. Hark, hark, watch dogs bark. Hark, hark, I hear the strain of stretching chanticleer. Where should the music be? The air and the earth. It sounds no more. And sure, it waits upon some god of the islands, sitting on a bank, weeping again the king my father's rack. This music crept by me upon the waters. I laying both their fury and my passion with this sweet air. Oh, thence I have followed it, or it hath drawn me rather. Oh, but tis gone. No, no, it begins again. O fathoms by thy father lies, of his bones are coral made. Those are pearls that were his eyes, nothing of him that doth aid, but doth suffer a sea change into something rich and strange. See them sorely ring his knell. Hark now I hear them. This ditty does remind me my drowned father. It is no mortal business, nor no sound that the earth owes. I hear it now above me. The fringe curtains of thine eyes advance and say what thou seest yon. What is it? A spirit? Lord, how it looks about. Believe me, sir, it carries a brave form, but tis a spirit. No wench, it eats and sleeps and hath such senses as we have, such. This gallant which thou seest was in the wreck, and but he something stained with grief that beauty's canker, thou mightest call him a goodly person. He has lost his fellows, and strays about to find him. I might call him a thing divine, for in nothing natural I ever saw a noble. Mm, it goes on, I see. 
as my soul prompts it, Spirit, kind Spirit, I'll free thee within two days for this. Most sure, the goddess on whom these heirs attend, vouchsafe my prayer, may know you, may know if you remain upon this island, that you have some ins good instruction, give that I, how I may bear me here, and my prime request, which I do last pronounce, oh, you wonders, oh, if you be made or not. No wonder, sir, but certainly a maid. My language, heavens, I am the best of them that speak the speech, uh, and were I but where tis spoken. Now, the best, what wert thou if the king of Naples heard thee? A single thing as I am now that wanders to Hear the speech of Naples. Oh, he does speak, hear me too. Ah, oh, that he, uh, that he does. I weep. Oh, myself, him, am Naples, who with mine eyes ne'er since an I'll ebb beheld the king, my father racked. A lot for mercy. Oh, yes, Faith, and for all his lords, the Duke of Milan and his brave son being twain. Mm, the Duke of Milan and his more braver daughter could control thee. If now twere fit to do it, at the first sight they have changed eyes. <laughs> Delicate Ariel, I'll set you free for this. A word, good sir. I fear you have done yourself some wrong. A word. Why speaks my father so ungently? This is the third man that e'er I saw, the first that e'er I cited for pity, moved my father to be inclined my way. Oh, if a virgin and your affection had not gone forth, I'll make you the queen of Naples. Soft, sir. One <laughs> word more. They are both in either's power, but this swift business I must uneasy make, lest too light winning makes the prize light. Uh, one word more. I charge thee that thou attend me. Thou dost here usurp the name thou wast not, and hast put thyself upon this island as a spy. No. To win it from me, the Lord on it. No, 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 as I am a man. There's nothing ill can dwell in such a temple if the ill spirit have so fair a house. Good things will strive to dwell with it. Follow me. Speak not you for him. He's a traitor. Come, no. I'll manacle thy neck and feet together. Sea water shalt thou drink. Thy food shall be the fresh brook mussels, withered roots and husks were in the acorn cradle. Follow. No, no, I will resist such entertainment till mine enemy has more power. Oh, dear father, make not too rash a trial of him, for he's gentle and not fearful. What, I say? My foot, my tutor, put thy sword out, traitor. Who makest the show but dares not strike? Thy conscience is so possessed with guilt come from thy ward. For I can here disarm thee with this stick and make thy weapon drop. Beseech you, father. Hence, hang not on my garments. Sir, have pity. I'll be his surety. Silence. One word more shall make me chide thee, if not hate thee. What? An advocate for an impostor. Hush! Thou thinkest there is no more such shapes as he? Having seen him and Caliban, foolish wench, to the most of men, this is a Caliban. 
and they to him are angels. My affections are then most humble. I have no ambition to see a goodlier man. Come on, obey. Thy nerves are in thy infancy again and have no vigor in them. So they are. My spirits, as in a dream, are all bound up. Oh, my father's loss, the weakness that I feel, the rack of all my friends, not this man's threats to whom I am subdued, are but light to me. And might I, but through my prison once a day, Behold this maid. Oh, all corners else is the earth. Let liberty make use of space enough. Have I such a prison? Mm, it works. Come on. Thou hast done well, fine Ariel. Follow me. Hark, what thou else shalt do me. Be of comfort, my father of a better nature, sir. Then he appears by speech. This is unwanted, which now came from him. Thou shalt be free as mountain winds, but then exactly do all points of my command. Do the syllable. Come, follow, speak not for him. Act two, scene one. Another part of the island, enter Alonzo, Sebastian, Antonio, Gonzalo, Adrian, Francisco, and others. Beseech you, sir, be merry, and you have a call, so that we all, uh, for our escape, is much beyond our loss, our hint of woe. It's common, every day some sailor's wife, the masters of some merchant, and uh, the merchant have just our theme of woe. But for the miracle, I mean our preservation, few in millions can speak like us. Then wisely, a good sir, weigh our sorrow with our content. Pretty peace. He receives comfort like cold porridge. The visitor will not give him or so. Look, he's winding up the watch of his wit. By and by it will strike. Sir? One, tell. When every grief is entertained that offered, come to the entertainer. A dollar. Ah, uh, the law comes to him. Indeed, you have spoken truer than you proposed. You have taken it wiselier than I meant you should. Therefore, my lord... Aye, what a spendthrift is he of this tongue! I pray thee, spare. Oh, well, I have done, uh, but yet... He will be talking. Which of he, or Adrian, for a good wager, first begins to crow. The old cock. <laughs> the cockerel. Done. The wager? A uh, laughter. A match. No, this island seems to be a desert. <laughs> we don't have that So guy. you're paid. Un uninhabitable, almost inaccessible. Yet? Yet, he couldn't not miss. It needs to be of subtle, tender, delicate intemperance. Temperance was a delicate wench. Aye, and a subtle, and he most learnedly delivered. Yeah, breathes upon us here most sweetly. As if it had lungs and not ones. Or as twere perfumed by a fen. There. Here is everything advantageous to life. True save means to live. Of that there's none or little. How lush and lusty the grass looks. Oh, how green. 
The ground indeed is tawny. With an eye of green in it. He misses not much. Oh, he doth but mistake the truth totally. But the rarity of it is, which is indeed almost beyond credit. As many vouched rarities are. That our garments, being as they were, drenched in the sea, uh, behold, uh, notwithstanding their freshness and their glosses, being rather new styled than stained with salt water. If but one of his pockets could speak, it would not say he lies. Aye, or very falsely pocket up his report. Methinks our garments are now as fresh as when we put them on first in Ash and in at the marriage of the king's fair daughter clarabelle to the king of tunis Twas a sweet marriage and we prosper well in our return tunis was never graced before with such a paragon to their queen not since widow dido's time widow a pox on that how come that widow in widow dido what if he had said widower Aeneas too, good lord? How you take it? Widow Dido said you? You make me study of that. She was of the Carthage, not of Tunis. This Tunis, sir, was Carthage. Carthage? I assure you, Carthage. His word is more than the miraculous harp. He hath raised the wall and houses too. What impossible matter will he make n easy next? I think he will carry this island home in his pocket and give it his son for an apple. And sowing the kernels of it in the sea bring forth more islands. Aye. Why, in good name? Oh, well. Uh, sir, we were talking that our garments seem now as fresh as when we were at Tunis at the marriage of your daughter, which is now queen. And the rarest that e'er came there. Faith, I beseech you, Widow Dido. Oh, Widow Dido, I, Widow Dido. Is not, sir, my daughter, my doublet as fresh as the first day I wore it? I mean, in a sort. That sort was well fished for. When I wore it at your daughter's marriage. <laughs> you cram these words into mine ears against the stomach of my sense. When I never married my daughter there for coming thence, my son is lost and in my rate she too, who is so far from Italy removed, I never shall again shall see her, O oh, thou mine her, of Naples and of Milan. What strange fish hath made this his meal on thee? Uh oh, Francisco. Who's Francisco? <laughs> Sir, Trump we may you. not live. <laughs> I saw him first, and the best and the surgeons under him, and rides upon their backs. He trod the water and whose enmity he flung aside and breathed, breasted, the surge must uh, most swollen that met him. His bold head above the contentious waves he kept and oared himself with his good arms in lusty stroke to the shore and that uh, o'er his waves worn basis bowed as uh, stooping to relieve him and I not uh, doubt he came alive to land. No, no, he's gone. Sir, you may thank yourself for his great loss. That would not bless our Europe with your daughter, but rather lose her to an African, where she at least is banished from your eye, who hath caused to wet the grief on it. Pretty peace. 
You were kneeled to and importuned otherwise by all of us, and the fair soul herself weighed between loathness and obedience at the which end of the beam should bow. We have lost your son, I fear, forever. Milan and Naples have more widows in them of this business making than we bring men to comfort them. The fault's your own. So is the dearest of a loss. loss. My lord, Sebastian, the truth you speak doth lack some gentleness, and some to speak it in rub the sword. Well, when you should uh, bring a plaster. Very well. And most chirurgically. Oh, whether in us all's good, sir, when you are cloudy. Foul weather. Very foul. And I, the plantation of this isle, my lord. Oh. Ill sort with nettle seed. Or ducks, or mallows. And were the king on it? What would I do? Escape being drunk for want of wine. If the Commonwealth, I would by contraries <laughs> execute all things, and for no kind of traffic would I admit no name of magistrate. Letters should not be known, riches, poverty, and use of service none contract and succession born a bound of land filth vineyard none no use of metal corn or wine or oil and no occupation all men idle all and women too but innocent and pure no sovereignty Yet he would be king on it. The latter end of this commonwealth forgets the beginning. All things in common, in sure, or in nature, should produce without sweat or endeavor. Treason, felony, sword, pike, knife, gun, or, or need of any engine. Would I not have, but nature would bring them forth of its own kind, all foison, all abundance, to feed my innocent people. No marrying amongst the subjects? None, man. All idle, whores and knaves. I would, with such perfection, govern, sir, and to sell the golden age. God save his majesty. Long live Gonzalo. And do you mark me, sir? Pretty oh, no more. Thou dost talk nothing to me. I do well believe your highness, and, and did it to minister occasion to these gentlemen who are of such sensible and nimble lungs that they always use to laugh at nothing. <laughs> Twas you we laughed at. Oh, well, who in this merry footing oh, am nothing to you? And so you may continue and laugh at nothing at all. <laughs> What a blow there was given. And it had not fallen flat long. You are gentlemen of brave metal, and you would lift the moon out of the sphere. If she could continue it for five weeks without changing. We would so, and then go a bat fouling. Nay, my good lord, be not angry. No, I am warned of you. I will not adventure my uh, discretion so weakly. Will you laugh me to sleep? For I am very heavy. Go sleep and hear us. 
What, all so soon asleep, I wish mine eyes would with themselves shut up my thoughts, I find they are inclined to do so. You, sir, do not omit the heavy offer of it. It seldom visits sorrow, when it doth, it is a comforter. We too, my lord, will guard your person while you take your rest, and watch your safety. Thank you, oh, wondrous heavy. What a strange drowsiness possesses them. It is the quality of the climate. Why doth it not our eyelid sink? I find not myself disposed to sleep. Nor I. My spirits are nimble. They fell together all, as if by consent. They dropped as by a thunderstroke. What might, worthy Sebastian? Oh, what might? No more, and yet methinks I see it in thy face. What thou shouldest be, the occasion speaks thee, and my strong imagination sees a crown dropping upon thy head. What? what? Art thou waking? Do you not hear me speak? I do, and surely it is a sleepy language that and thou speakest out of thy sleep. What is it thou didst say? This is a strange repose, to be asleep, with eyes wide open, standing, speaking, moving, and yet so fast asleep. Noble Sebastian, thou lettest thy fortune sleep, die rather, winkest thou whilst thou art waking. Thou dost snore distinctly, there's meaning in thy snores. I am more serious than my custom, you must be so too. If heed me, which to do troubles o'er thee. Well, I'm standing water. I'll teach you how to flow. <laughs> do so, to ebb. Hereditary sloth instructs me. Oh, if you but knew how you the purpose cherish, whilst thus you mock it, how in stripping it you more invest it, Ebbing men, indeed, most often do so near the bottom, run by their own fear or sloth. Prithee, say on, the setting of thine eye and cheek proclaim a matter from thee, and a birth indeed which throws thee much to yield. Thus, sir, although this lord of weak remembrance, this, who shall be of as little memory, when he is earthed, hath here almost persuade, for he's a spirit of persuasion, only professes to persuade the kings his sons alive. Tis the mo tis as impossible that he's undrowned, and he that sleeps here swims. I have no hope that he's undrowned. Oh. Out of that, no hope. What great hope you have, you. No hope that way is another way so high a hope that even ambition cannot pierce a wink beyond. But doubt discovery there. Will you grant with me that Ferdinand is drowned? He's gone. Then tell me, who's the next heir of Naples? Clarabelle. She that is queen of Tunis. She that dwells ten leagues beyond man's life. She that from Naples can have no note unless the sun were post. The man in the moon's too slow till the newborn chins be rough and razorable. She that from whom we all were sea swallowed though some cast again and by that destiny to perform an act, whereof what's past is prologue, and what's to come in yours and my discharge. What stuff is this, how say you? Tis true, my brother's daughter, Queen of Tunis, so is she heir of Naples, twixt which regions there is some space. A space whose every cubit seems to cry out, how shall that Clarabelle, measure us back to Naples. Keep in Tunis, and let Sebastian wake. Say, 
this word death that now hath seized them. Why, they were no worse than now they are. They, there be that can rule Naples as well as he that sleeps. Lords that can prat as ambly and unnecessarily as this Gonzalo. I myself could make a cough of as deep chat. Oh, that you bore the mind that I do. What a sleep were this for your advancement. Do you understand me? Mm, Methinks I do. And how does your content tender your own good fortune? I remember. You did supplant your brother Prospero. True. And look how well my garment sits upon me, much feeter than before. My brother's servants were then my fellows, now they are my men. But for your conscience? Aye, sir, where lies that? If, if twere Kybe, twould put me in to my slipper, but I feel not this deity in my bosom. Twenty consciences that stand betwixt me and Milan, candied by they that and melt ere they molest. Here lies your brother, no better than the earth he lies upon. If he were that which now he's like, that's dead, whom I, with this obedient steel, three inches of it, can lay to bed forever, whilst you doing thus to perpetual wink, for I might put this ancient morsel, this Sir Prudence, who should not abrade, of course. For all the rest, they'll take suggestion as a cat laps milk. They'll tell the clock to thy any business, and we say befits the hour. Thy case, dear friend, shall be my precedent. As thou goest, Milan, as thou gottest Milan, I'll come by Naples. Draw thy sword. One stroke shall free thee from the tribute which thou payest, and I, the king, shall love thee. Draw together, and then I rear my hand. Do you the like to fall it on Gonzalo? Oh, but one word. <laughs> My master, though his art foresees the danger that you, his friend, are in and sends me forth, for else his project dies to keep them living while you here do snoring lie. Open I conspiracy, his time doth take, if of life you keep a care. <laughs> Shake off slumber. And beware, awake, awake. <laughs> <laughs> then, then let us both be sudden. Now, good angels, preserve the king. How oh, now, now? Ho, oh, awake, why are you drawn? Wherefore this ghastly looking? Oh, what's the matter? Whilst we stood here securing your repose, even now we heard a hollow burst of bellowing like bulls or rather lions. This didst not wake you? It struck mine ear most terribly. I heard nothing. Oh, uh, oh, it twas a din to fright a monster's ear to make an earthquake. Sure, it was the roar of the whole herd of lions. But heard you this, Gonzalo? Upon mine honor, sir, I heard humming, uh, but that strange one too, which did awake me. I shaked you, sir, and cried as my eyes opened, and I saw their weapons drawn. There was a noise, that's barely. His best that we stood upon our guard or that we uh, quit this place. 
Let's draw our weapons. Lead off this ground. and Let's make further search for my poor son. Ah, oh, heavens keep him from these beasts. Oh, for he is sure in the island. Lead away. I... For all my lord shall know what I have done. So king, go safely on to seek thy son. Seen to another part of the island, enter Caliban with a burden of wood. A noise of thunder is heard. All the infections that the sun sucks up from bogs, fens, flats, on prosper fall and make him by inch meal a disease. His spirits hear me, and yet I needs must curse. But they'll nor pinch, fright me with urgent shows, pitch me in the mire, nor lead me like a firebrand in the dark out of my way, unless he bid them. But for every trifle are they set upon me, sometime like apes that mow and chatter at me, and after bite me, and then like hedgehogs which lie tumbling in my barefoot way and mount their pricks at my footfall. Sometimes I am all wound with adders who with cloven tongues do hiss me into madness. Oh, lo, now lo, here comes a spirit of his and to torment me for bringing wood in slowly. Ah, oh, fall flat, perchance he will not mind me. Here's neither bush nor trout. <laughs> to bear off and now weather it all, and uh, another swar storm brewing. Oh, I hear it sing in the wind. Uh, yon some black cloud, yon huge one, looks like a foul Barn hard that <laughs> would shed his finger liquor, and if it should thunder as it did before, I know not where to hide my head. <laughs> ah, but on some cloud cannot choose but fall by pale foes. What have we here? A man? Or fish? Oh, dead or alive? A fish? Oh, <laughs> he smells like a fish. A very ancient and fish-like smell. A kind of, not of the newest, poor John. A strange fish. <sighs> but were I in England now, as once I was, and had but this fish painted. Not a holiday fool there, but would give a piece of silver. And, and <laughs> there would be a monster that would give, make a man any strange beast that makes the man, where, when they will lay out, tend to see a dead Indian. <laughs> legged like a man, and his fins like arms. Oh, 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 my troth, I do now let loose my opinion. Hold it for no longer. This is no fish, but an islander that hath, hath lately suffered by a thunderbolt. Alas, the storm is to come again. Oh, any best way it is to creep under this gabardine? Uh, there is no other shelter hereabout. Misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows. I will here shroud until the dregs of the storm be past. I shall no more to see, to see. Here shall I die ashore. 
This is the very scurvy tune to sing at a man's funeral. Well, here's my comfort. The master, the swabber, the boat swain and I, the gunner and his mate, loved Mal, Meg, and Marianne and Marjorie, e -e, but none of us cared for Kate, mm -mm, for she had a tongue with a tang. She would cry to a sailor, go hang. She loved not the savor of tar nor a pitch, yet a tailor might scratch her wherever she did itch. <laughs> Then to see boys and let her go hang. This is a scurvy tune to and he but his to my comfort. Do not torment me. Oh, what's the matter? Here we have we devils we hear. Do you put tricks upon us with savages and men of Ind? Huh? I have not escaped drowning to be afeard now of your four, four legs, for it has been said, as a proper man, as ever went on four legs, cannot make him give ground. And it shall be said so again while Stefano breathes as nostrils. The spirit torments me, yo. There is some monster of this island with four legs who hath got, as I, as, as I take it, an og. Where the devil should he learn our language? I will give him some relief, but if it be but for that, if I can recover him and keep him tame, and get him to Naples with him. He's a present for any emperor that ever trod on Nietzsche leather. Oh, do not torment me, really. I'll bring my wood home faster. He's in his fit now and does not talk after the wisest. He shall taste of my bottle. And if he have ever drunk wine afore, will go near to remove his fit. If I can recover him and keep him tame, I will not take too much for him. He shall pay for him and that half him that soundly. Thou dost me yet but little hurt. Thou wilt do not. I know it by the trembling. Now prosper works upon thee. Come on your ways. Open your mouth. Here it is, which I shall give you the language to you, cat. Open your mouth. This will take, you shall shake your shaking. I can tell you, and that soundly, you cannot tell. Who's your friend? Open your chaps again. <clears throat> I should know that voice. Oh, it should be, but he's drowned. And there are devils. Oh, defend me. Four legs and two voices. A most delicate monster. This forward voice now is to speak well of his friend. His backward voice <clears throat> is to utter foul speeches and to detract. Hmm. If all the wine in my bottle will recover him, I will help his uh, og. Come, I'm in. I will pour some in thy other mouth. <laughs> Stefano! Dost thy other mouth call me? Mercy, mercy. Oh, this is a devil and no monster. I will leave him. I have no long spoon. Stefano, if thou be a Stefano, attach me and speak to me, for I am tranquilo. 
and be not afeard, thy good friend Trinculo. If thou beest Trinculo, come forth. Pull thee by thy lesser legs. If uh, they be Trinculos, these uh, are they. Those uh, are very Trinculo indeed. How camest thou to be the siege of this mooncalf? Uh, well, Can well. he vent Trinculo? I took him at his at his killed with a, a thunderstroke. Uh, but n art thou not drowned, Stefano? I hope now that thou art not drowned, and is the storm or blown? I hid me under the dead moon cast garbadine for fear of the storm. And art thou living, Stefano? Oh, Stefano, two Neapolitans escaped. <laughs> Pretty, do not turn me about. My stomach is uh, not constant. These be fine things, and if they be not sprites, at the brave god and bear celestial liquor, I will kneel to him. How didst thou escape? How camest thou hither? Swear by this bottle how thou camest hither. I escaped upon but a butt of sack, which the sailors heaved overboard by this bottle, which I made of the bark of tree with mine own hands since I was cast ashore. I'll swear upon that bottle to be thy true subject. For the liquor is not earthly. Eh, swear again how thou escapest. I swum ashore, man, like a duck. I can swim like a duck. I'll be sworn. Eh, kiss the book. Ah. Thou camest can swim like a duck. Ah, uh, thou art made like a goose. Oh, Stefano, hast any more of this? The whole butt, oh. man. My cellar is in the rock by the seaside where my wine is hid. Oh, oh no, moon calf. How does thine are? Hast thou not dropped from heaven? Out o'er the moon, I do assure thee, I was the man in the moon when time was. I have seen thee in her, and I do adore thee. My mistress showed me thee in thy dog and thy, uh, thy bush. Come, swear to that. Kiss the book. I will furnish it anon with new contents, swear. By this good light, this is a very shallow monster. I have feared of him, a very weak monster. And the man from the moon, oh, a most poor, credulous monster. Well drawn, monster, in good sooth. I'll, I'll show thee every fertile inch of the island. and. I will kiss thy foot, I prithee be my god. By this light a most perfidious and drunken monster, oh, when God's asleep, he'll rob his butt over. Uh, I'll, I'll kiss thy foot, I'll, I'll swear myself thy subject. Come on then, down, and swear. <laughs> laugh myself to sleep by this puppy headed monster a most scurvy monster I do find in my heart to beat him <laughs> come kiss but that poor monsters and drunk drink an abominable monster uh, I'll show thee the best spring I'll pluck thee berries I'll fish for thee and get thee wood enough. A plague upon the tyrant that I serve. 
I'll bear him no more sticks, but follow thee, thou wondrous man. A most ridiculous monster. Oh, I to make a wonder of a poor drunkard. But for thee, let, let me bring thee where crabs grow, and I with my long nails would dig thee pig nuts. Show thee a jay's nest and instruct thee how to snare the nimble marmoset. I'll bring thee to clustering filbert, and sometime I'll get the young camels from the rock. Wilt thou go with me? I prithee now, lead the way without any more talking. Trinculo, the king and all our company else being drowned, we will inherit here, here. Bear my bottle, fellow Trinculo. We'll fill him by and by again. Uh, farewell, master, farewell, farewell. A howling monster, a drunken monster. Ha, no ha, more ha. dams I'll make for faith. No fetching for <laughs> At requiring <laughs> no scrape, trencher, no wash a dish, and pan, caliban, as a new master, get a new man. <laughs> freedom, hey day, hey day. Freedom, freedom, hey, they freedom. <laughs> oh, brave monster, lead the way. Act three, the war, the